Hi, this video is dedicated for the prepare students in Abdurrahman bin Faisal University and it's about how to solve the essay part questions in math final exam. We aim to give you here some tips and methodologies to solve these kind of questions. Let's begin by the fill in the blanks part. Now let's begin with the first question. If two positive angles add up to 90 degrees, so they are called complementary angles. We know that if two angles add up to 180 degrees, they are called supplementary angles. In the second question, any triangle whose sides A, B, and C satisfy the relation C squared equals A squared plus B squared is, of course, a right triangle. We call this the reverse of the Pythagorean theorem. Now question 3 is said if the terminal side of an angle theta intersects the unit circle at the point square root of 3 over 2 and a half, then the trigonometric value cosec of theta equals. Now before answering this question, we have to know that while working on the unit circle, so the x component, it is just the cosine value. So the cosine of theta will be square root of 3 divided by 2. So here is the cosine value of the angle. Whereas the y component, it is just the sine value. So the sine of theta equals half. Graphically, we have the sine value here equals to half. The cosec of theta equals 1 over sine of theta. Now, if we replace the sine of theta by its value, we find that the cosec of theta equals 1 divided by half, which is equal to 2. So the final answer here is 2. Of course, if you were asked about the second of theta, this is equal to 1 over the cosine of theta. So it should be 1 over square root of 3 divided by 2, which is 2 over square root of 3. And we can rationalize to get 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. Before tackling question number 4, we should remember two notions. The first thing is that the cosine is periodic with period 2 pi, so that cosine x plus 2 pi equals cosine x. The second thing is that when you have a function which is periodic with period p, like g of x plus p equals g of x, so that g is p periodic, the function f of x which is equal to a times g of bx plus c is periodic with period p divided by the absolute value of b. In our case, the function f of x is the function cosine pi x plus 2. So it is in the form of a g of bx plus c, where a is equal to 1, b is equal to pi, and c equals 2. So we did use that the period of f is p divided by the absolute value of b, where p is 2 pi and b is pi. So we did use that the period is 2. So the final answer here, the period of the function f of x equals cosine pi x plus 2 is 2. To answer question 5, we have to know that graphs of even functions are symmetric with respect to the y-axis, whereas graphs of odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin. Now since the cosine function is an even function, the symmetry here is with respect to the y-axis. So the graph of the function f of x equals cosine x is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Now questions 6 and 7 are about some definitions concerning vectors. Two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. Whereas two vectors u and v are orthogonal 
if and only if their dot product is equal to zero. The main rule to answer question number eight is that the modulus of z to the power of n equals the modulus of z to the n. So if the modulus of z is equal to three, then the modulus of z squared is given by the modulus of z squared equals the modulus of z to the power of two. But the modulus of z equals three, which gives three, three squared, and this is equal to nine. So the answer here is nine. We end this part by two questions about two definitions concerning matrices and linear systems. A symmetric matrix B is a square matrix that verifies the transpose of B equals B. The case where we have only one solution for a linear system, this is called the independent case. In the first question of the essay part, we have to verify the identity sine squared times sec squared plus cosec squared of x equals the sec squared of x. For this end, we have to recall the basic trigonometric identities which we have seen together. The first one is that the cosine squared plus the sine squared of x equals 1. The second one is 1 plus tan squared equals to the second squared. And the third one is the cotan squared of x plus 1 equals the cosec squared of x. Now, let's begin by the most complicated part in this uh, equality. So, the most complicated part is the left side. So, we have sine squared of x times second squared of x plus cosec squared of x is sine squared of x times 1 over cosine squared of x plus 1 over sine squared of x. This is because the second equals 1 over cosine and the cosec function is 1 over sine x. So we can expand this multiplication and we can have we can see that we have sine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x divided by sine squared of x which gives the tangent squared of x plus 1. But according to the trigonometric identity number 2, this is equal to the second squared of x. So, in the second question, we have to solve the equation 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0 over the interval 0 to pi. So, the first step is to isolate the cosine x on the left side part. So, we can say that 2 cosine x equals minus 1, which leads to cosine x equals minus half. The value of cosine x here is negative, and we know that the cosine is negative in two quadrants, either in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 3. Now, to now let alpha be the reference angle of x, then cosine alpha equals half, which gives that alpha equals pi over 3. Now, in quadrant 2, using the rules of the reference angle, we get x equals pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3, whereas in quadrant 3, x equals pi plus pi over 3, which will give 4 pi over 3. So, the solution set for this equation is s equals 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Now in exercise 2, let a and b be two real numbers. The position vector with the initial point a with coordinates a squared minus 3a1 and terminal point b with x component 1 and y component 3b plus 1 is 1, 2. Find the values of a and b. To solve this question, we have to know that the position vector is given by xb minus xa, yb minus ya, which means that the vector ab is equal to 1 minus a squared minus 3a and the y component is 3b plus 1 minus 1. After simplification we get the x component equals minus x squared plus 3a plus 1 and the y component is 3b. Putting this equal to the vector 1 2 we get a system of two equations and two variables. 
The first one is minus a squared plus 3a plus 1 equals 1 and 3b equals 2. This is because two vectors are equal if they have the same components. Now solving the first equation we have minus a squared plus 3a equals 0 and the second one it's obvious since we get b equals to 2 divided by 3. Now putting a as a common factor in the first equation we get a times minus a plus 3 equals 0 and still b equals to 2 thirds. Now, a product is equal to 0 if one of the numbers is equal to 0, means that a equals 0 or a equals 3. Now, in the second question, we should find the vector u that has a magnitude of 3 and a direction angle of pi over 3. We know that if we have an horizontal component x and a vertical component y, so x equals to the magnitude of u times the cosine of theta, where theta is the position angle of the vector, uh, whereas y equals the magnitude of u times the sine of theta. This leads to the fact that x equals 3 cosine pi over 3 and y equals 3 sine pi over 3. But we know that the cosine of pi over 3 equals half, whereas the sine of pi over 3 equals root of 3 over 2. So at the end, we find that x equals 3 by 2 and y equals 3 square root of 3 divided by 2. In the third question, we should find the magnitude and the direction angle of the vector v with components minus 3 and square root of 3. We know that the magnitude of v equals the square root of x squared plus y squared where x and y are the components of the vector, which gives that in this case the magnitude of v equals the square root of minus 3 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. This is equal to the square root of 9 plus 3 which is equal to root of 12. In question 4 we should find the value of x such that the vector minus 2x is orthogonal to the vector minus 1, 1. We know that u and v are orthogonal if and only if their dot product is equal to 0. In our case, the dot product of minus 2x by the vector minus 1, 1 will give minus 2 times minus 1 plus x times 1. So if you put this equal to 0, we have to solve the equation 2 plus x equals 0, which means that x equals minus 2. Finally, in question number 5, uh, we should find the angle between the vectors u, which is equal to 2i minus 3j, and v, which is equal to minus i minus 2j. And we will round our answer to the nearest degree. So, to solve this question, we know that we have a theorem which must be applied here, that an angle between two vectors is given by the cosine inverse of the dot product of uv divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So let's start by computing the dot product of u and v. So the dot product of u and v is equal to the dot product of the vector 2 minus 3 with the vector minus 1 minus 2. This gives 2 times minus 1 which is equal to minus 2 plus minus 3 times minus 2 which is equal to 6 so that the dot product equals 4. Whereas a small computation gives that the magnitude of u equals square root of 13, the magnitude of v equals root of 5. Now coming back to our rule, the angle between the two vectors is given by the cosine inverse of 4, which is the dot product of u and v, divided by square root of 3 times square root of 5. A small computation using our calculator will give that this is approximately equal to 60 degrees. So I hope that this video will help you to understand how to solve the essay part of the final exam. And for further practice, you, you can try to solve the old versions of the final exam uploaded on your Blackboard.